Well, this aged like milk. And who does this chicken work for? Don't you dare tell me the Soviets are back. The Soviet Union? I thought you guys broke up. Yes, that's what we wanted you to think. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Nathan Cudgel here. Now, you may have heard on the news recently about a certain Russian dictator. Now, we're not actually going to be talking about that, uh, individual today. Although we will be talking about another Russian dictator, Stalin. Ironically enough, the current Russian dictator should actually be called Stalin, because that's what's happening to his front lines right now. Now, I'm sure you all know who Stalin is, the big mustachioed man himself. One of, if not possibly, the most paranoid man ever to live. He'd sneeze the wrong way and he'd chop your head off. Responsible for the deaths of millions of people, perhaps even responsible for the deaths of tens of millions of people, many of whom his own advisors and people working in his own interests. Guy wakes up on the wrong side of the bed and has another advisor executed. Why must I be surrounded by frickin' idiots? Stalin was one of the absolute worst villains ever to exist, and today we're going to be looking at a man who put him in his place. Pelegedine Gendin, the Prime Minister of Mongolia from 1932 to 1936. He was instrumental in Mongolia's independence from China in 1924, and was an absolute mad lad. There's, there's just no other way to describe this guy. You want to know what he did? You want to know what he did? He slapped Stalin in the face and broke his pipe. Stalin. The most paranoid man possibly to ever exist. One of the most powerful men in the world at the time. And this guy slapped him in the face and broke his pipe in front of everyone. Now let's rewind the story for a second. In uh, 1932, Peljadin is appointed Prime Minister of Communist Mongolia. Communist Mongolia at the time was basically a puppet state to the Soviet Union. Although Peljadin didn't really like this. In fact, he really wasn't that great of a communist. He even advocated for the development of private enterprises in a communist country. You can already see see where this strife is going to occur between the hero and villain. But beyond that, Peljadin was also a devout Buddhist. Stalin, if you don't know, was basically an r slash atheism reddit mod. The absolute most extreme emo hater of religion you could possibly imagine. To the point where he asked Peljadin to murder 100,000 Buddhist monks in Mongolia. Now, Peljadin, being the mad lad he was, didn't do that. Trying to kind of play off both sides so he always ends up on top, he would tell Stalin and that's sure buddy sure I'll kill them all I got you, pal. Then going home and, and not doing that. Stalin eventually uh, started catching on to this, and in 1935 held a massive banquet for Peljadin to try and rein him back in and get him back on Stalin's side. Decor, food, and lots of drinks. Everyone was having a great time. Stalin and Peljadin sitting side by side, drinking very heavily, until finally Stalin said something that was just the straw that broke the camel's back for Peljadin. I arrange your work. Why do you always behave in violation of the law. Don't forget who made you prime minister. Basically, Stalin's saying, you're not even really the leader of Mongolia. I am. So why are you defying me? Peljadin at this point had had enough of Stalin, frankly, uh, who hadn't, and did the one thing no one else had the balls to do. He stood up and slapped Stalin across the face. Causing Stalin's pipe to fall from his mouth and shatter on the ground. Meanwhile, the whole room of advisors and other bureaucrats went quiet in awe and shock. So then, what did Stalin do? Did he have him executed on the spot? Did he slap him back in a big slap fight? No, he didn't do that. He just looked down at his shattered pipe and told his guards that Peljadin is drunk. Bring him back to his quarter. His guards then forcefully dragged Peljadin uh, back to his quarters. Then what happened? Was he poisoned? Beheaded? Sent to Gulag? No, he went back to Mongolia. And he stayed Prime Minister for a solid year. Unfortunately, Stalin did eventually uh, remove him from his position and uh, sent him to a vacation house in Russia until 1937 when he was put on trial and uh, well, executed. Which sucks, but on the bright side. For
for a solid year, that man got to live as the biggest mad lad in the world, as the only person in the world who slapped Stalin and broke his pipe and lived to tell the tale, at least temporarily. What I wouldn't give to be a fly on the wall in that dining room. Absolute hero. But yeah, I really enjoyed reading that story. I know there's uh, certainly a Russian dictator in our world now I would love to slap. I'm sure everyone would right about now. But regardless, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This epic tale of an absolute hero who slapped Stalin and kinda got away with it. Whose memory is unfortunately not remembered as well as it should be. In fact, even in Mongolia, most people didn't even know there was ever a guy named Peljudin who was prime minister until 1993 when the Soviet documents were declassified. It was illegal to even say this man's name in Mongolia for the longest time because of Stalin. You can truly judge who a man is by who hates him. Shout out to Peljadine. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, Slava Ukraini.